Ubiquiti released a video on the G4 Doorbell Pro in January and it has finally come available. And luckily I was able to get my hands on one of these for me to review for you. So we're gonna run through unboxing the product, run through some of the specs, get the device adopted, and while we're looking into the interface and settings, we'll go ahead and test this out in the daytime. Before I get started though, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like and comment down below. I will have a doorbell comparison video with the G4 coming soon, so be sure to hit the bell to be notified when that gets released. Also, if you wanna support the channel, there are other ways to do this with my Amazon affiliate links down below, and also there's now the super things. So if you wanna do that, it helps the channel in every way. So this right here is the G4 doorbell. And let's first take a look at what comes inside the box. I'm just quickly opening, you can see right on the front, it's got a little welcome logo just here. So that is the programmable display that they talk about. It has some protective padding on the front, so there's nothing actually in here. And this is the doorbell. So we can see straight on here, we have the camera at the front, the camera at the bottom with the lighting path. So it actually has illumination of up to two meters on your path. There is a screen just here. There's the doorbell push button just here. And on the back, if we take a look, we have a reset button at the top. We have the USB adapter that plugs into here. So you can plug in a PoE adapter or an AC adapter. It's entirely up to you. And you have the two screws that you had on the previous generation doorbell as well. So let's just pop that back in. We've got a little release mechanism just here so you can push this up to release it from the clamp. And that's the doorbell. In the European version, there is again still a transformer that comes with it. So I know in the previous version in the US you didn't have a transformer, but there's one here inside this one if you buy it from the EU. And for those that are gonna be asking, this is what the spec looks like of the transformer. It's just on here. Continuing inside the box, we have the wall mount. So this is the side angle one and oh, it comes with both together. So this is the one you would mount to keep it flat on the wall and then you get one that keeps it off at an angle. So depending on how you wanna mount it, that just sits nicely inside there. And there we go, that's how that works. Just like the previous version, you get a level mount. So you can pop that on here, make sure it is entirely straight before you mount it. Not actually sure I would probably trust this one, but that comes within it anyway. Again, same as the previous model. You have these two if you wanna go directly into the unit itself from an AC uh, from the transformer. So you can pop that in here, just here. They go just there. And you have the two if you have a chime as well. So you can put a mechanical chime set up on here. Now I did do one on the G4 doorbell. I'll probably do a video on this one and how to set this up with, a, with an analog, a traditional chime as well. There's some mounting screws. And there we go. That is uh, all that comes inside the box. Let's go ahead and talk about the specs of this camera. So it has one eight megapixel camera, which is the one at the bottom just here, which you can see your packages from. The one facing out to you is a five megapixel camera. And both these have a video output of 1600 by 1200. You have the option to connect this to your network via Wi-Fi, And now you have the option of doing it via ethernet as well with the additional adapter. The adapter is still in early access. It's not available at the time of this recording. So hopefully that will be available soon. It has two-way built-in audio with echo cancellation. Hopefully the microphone's a little bit better than the previous one, but we'll give that a test a little bit later. Along with the camera at the bottom, as I mentioned, the light can be illuminated for up to two meters away. It has a motion detection sensor, which you'd expect it to do if it's gonna pick up motion, and it's IPX4 rated, means it can take water splashes in any direction. So let's get this powered up and see how easy it is to get adopted on the phone, and we'll take a look at the web interface. A couple of things I am interested in, this did mention about the NFC reader and the fingerprint reader, so I will be intrigued to have a look at how they connect and to make sure they are available in the interfaces and even if they can integrate with a third-party product such as Home Assist. So I'm inside the Unify Protect app and if you take a look, you can actually see, it says for you to download the app on the screen. Also, you can see on the screen, there's a new device found and to adopt it, it's really simple. You just click add. It tells you you're close by. It's telling me to add it again, but we'll add it again anyway. And there we go. So it's connecting to the device via Bluetooth. And then we're gonna go ahead and it's locating the network. So you're gonna then specify what network you want it on. And then you can see the camera is now updating. So 
we'll give that a second and also you can see it on the camera itself just here it is updating so we'll give that a minute or two for it to update and then we'll come back and take a look at the camera okay there you go you can see you can probably see on the screen the application has been updated there might be a quick lag or there might be a little bit of a lag between the devices but you can see that's now updated and to switch between the cameras it's just a case of pressing this button here so you can see my hand just here and then switching between the other one that's how you would switch between those two cameras so for the camera settings itself you've got the little settings button just here you've got the view quality so you can choose whether you want low high or auto the viewer position do you want the below the you'd want it below the bar so you can see the whole thing or do you want the default so we'll go below the bar uh, do you want the event scroll haptic feedback yes you do so then we look at quickly run into the camera settings so microphone infrared status sounds you can adjust the camera picture with the brightness and the hue the hdr that's all in there all the overlay information so you can take off the unify logo because i don't want that and it's quite interesting you can see it just down in the bottom left hand corner you can see a preview of what the other cameras seeing as well which is quite cool you then have all the motion zones recording quality when to record then you have the notification settings and then also you have the connection status as well so there doesn't seem to be anything about um, the fingerprint reader the display had to change the picture of the display or anything like that so I'm going to have a quick look at the web interface now so we'll go across to the computer and have a look and see if there is anything different there for those of you that are probably thinking the image quality isn't that great I need to just take the plastic seal off and you can see the image quality is now slightly better also as well so you can see we're in Unify Protect, we have the G4 Doorbell Pro, and that's now set up, it's up to date. You can see just down here, we've got an IP, last motion time, and the last ring time. So we go to recording, we've got the similar sort of settings as you would normally see in Unify Protect. You have the recording quality, motion detection settings, smart zones, smart detection zones, and privacy zones. You then go to settings, you can give it a name, microphone sensitivity, status sound, status lights, doorbell message so this is where you have the leave package and when you want it so we can leave the package at the door and it will come up with that on there so if I go ahead and click custom it says you can type in a message but that I don't see any option for the screen to be able to add anything in so maybe that's coming the chime type you can add a mechanical or digital chime depending on what you've got Wi-Fi connection so it gives you the SSID Overlay information, restart, advance, there's nothing in here, then RTSPS. So interestingly, you can actually use the package cam as an RSTP feed as well, which is quite cool. And if we move to the live view, you can see this is the camera here facing upwards, you can see just here, and this is the downward camera as well. So you can have both of them being viewed together, just the top, just the bottom, or both. So that's what we have set up at the moment. You have the normal regular scrolling timeline, which probably has me moving around this room. So that's also there. You have the quality version, you can take a snapshot and you can download a snippet as well like you normally would expect. So all the settings generally are set the same as what you have seen in all the Protect cameras and what, you, or what you've seen in the previous Unified Doorbell. So there's nothing really changed here. So I am hoping there is a software update coming soon which introduces some of these new features that they've spoken about in a previous video. If I've missed something and somebody else has found those settings, do let me know down in the comments below because I really want to be able to play around with some of these options that they have. Mounting and installing this camera is really easy. There's a screw at the top and the bottom. Please ignore my makeshift door that I've made out of OSB. Uh, the cable, you need a hole at the back for the cable to go through, which is USB. And then really clipping the camera is really simple and easy. You push the camera up, which you can see here, and then down towards the bottom, it just clips straight in and it's really simple and easy to install. I'm standing about a meter away from the microphone and this is an audio test from the G4 Doorbell Pro. Here I am doing a day test for a package delivery. So what I'm doing is running through day and night in each scenario. So this is a package delivery at night and you can see that it's still fairly clear, the image uh, it does get slightly pixelated when you move quick. Um, then we have the number plate license test during the day, again, relatively clear. Uh, the camera quality is really good throughout the day for the night uh, the image does get clearer as you come closer so you can see you can't see the number plate due to the ir reflection but as you get closer it does become visible 
Then finally, the test just walking from the back of the garden just so you can see how far it is. My back of my garden is about 20 to 25 meters ish, give or take. Um, and you can see how clear it gets as you come closer. Uh, and then again at night, you can just see this figure uh, coming closer. And as you, that's probably about three meters away now. As you get closer, you can make out a face as to who it is. Now the package cam is somewhat disappointed. You can see during the day, it's quite clear. But at night, there's no IR sensors. So you can see the, when the light's on, you can see the package. But as the light turns off, you can see the package disappears. What do I think of the doorbell? Well, I really like that it's easy and simple to set up. The USB support is a really good feature that's been added. Now, for those that want to know, I was just using a straightforward USB plug to power the camera itself, so nothing special. Uh, so you may not need to buy that adapter that comes for it eventually. But the PoE adapter is something that I think is gonna be really good. If only they had the PoE built into the device, but given the slimness of the camera itself, I don't think the PoE probably would have worked inside it. The package cam is a really good feature. The only thing I didn't like too much, or maybe I've missed this, is there was no IR light on the package cam. So living in the UK during the winter months, it gets darker a lot earlier, around about 4 p.m. So it's really good to have that IR feature on the package itself. The light is also really good. It's fairly bright, it lights up quite well. So if you don't have any lights in your area or around your porch area or wherever the front of your house is, that's a really good feature. What I'm somewhat disappointed with is the NFC reader and the fingerprint reader. I was really looking forward to getting around and playing with this to see how it works and what it does. It looks like it's a feature that's coming that's not quite here yet. The front screen, again, you can only just put the messages on there that you used to be able to on the other doorbell. So again, I'm hoping Ubiquiti, these, these updates are coming soon. And as I mentioned earlier, the package cam with the IR light. Overall, I think it's a good camera, but I'm gonna be doing a G4 versus G4 doorbell pro comparison video soon. So just so we can see what the differences are, whether the upgrade's actually worth it. So if you do wanna see that, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when I release that video. I hope you found this video useful. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.